on this Trinity Sunday. Wherever you are at this moment, now and together, let us worship God. We will light a light in the name of God the Father, who lit the world and breathed the breath of life for us. We will light a light in the name of Jesus Christ the Son, who saved the world and stretched out his hand to us. 
we will light a light in the name of the Holy Spirit, who encompasses the world and blesses our hearts with yearning. We will light three lights for the trinity of love, God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Come among us now, Creator God. Come and walk with your people, for you alone are our strength and glory. Come and walk before us and beside us and behind us, for you alone are our shelter and our direction. Come and seek and find and put us right, for you alone are the light in our darkness. Come, Creator God. Come among us, Lord Jesus Christ, you whom angels worship and children adore. Come and sit close to us, you who hurled the stars into space and shaped the spider's weaving. Come and heal and bring to life you who walked the long road to Jerusalem and lit a flame that dances forever. Come, Lord Jesus Christ. Come among us, Holy Spirit of God. Come and burst with the brightness of flame into the coldness of our lives. Come and sweep out the dusty corners of our apathy and breathe new life into our struggles for change. Come and speak words that blow over the barriers of our mistrust. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we fear your judgment. Teach us to know it as our friend. And so let us bless you now. For you come to us when we are most ashamed. And when we hide our face from you, you will not suffer us to turn away. Know us, judge us, heal us, turn us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised to the heavens. When I consider the heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, or the son of man that you should care for him? And yet you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have adorned him with glory and honour. You have given him mastery over the works of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and even the wild beasts of the field. 
the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The reading is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 11. And now, my brothers, goodbye. Strive for perfection. Listen to my appeals. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a brotherly kiss. All God's people send you the greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 28 and it's verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end, the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. Lo, I am with you, Lo, I am with you, Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. Lo, I am with you when you leave self behind. Lo, I am with you when you leave self behind. Lo, to 
the end of the world. Lo, I am with you. Lo, I am with you. Lo, I am with you to the end of the world. Today, I'd like to welcome the Reverend Sean Sanders. I've asked him to tell us a little about what the Trinity means to him. When I was candidating for the ordained ministry 26 years ago, I had to give my testimony and answer questions in front of a hundred ministers at a synod meeting in Archway Central Hall, along with five other candidates. The first candidate went into a pier before the synod. He came back looking shocked. They asked me what I meant by God, he said, shaking. The rest of us began to panic. What would we say if we were asked that same question? I prepared an answer in my mind. God is the transcendent one who creates us, greater than we can imagine, but the one who is also imminent, who is close to us. It wasn't exactly snappy, but I hoped it was enough for me to pass the audition. I was called in, standing in front of a hundred ministers. I gave my testimony and then waited anxiously to respond to their deep theological questions. But they didn't ask me anything, let alone what I meant by God. A few years later, I realised there was an obvious answer to that question. What do Christians mean by God? God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God is Trinity. It's as simple as that. But of course, you might say, hang on, it's not that simple. What do you mean by all of that? The Trinity can mean lots of things, and that's before you get into a discussion about the language of gender. In the church's year, this Sunday, Trinity Sunday, follows on from Pentecost Sunday, which we celebrated last week. This Sunday completes the round of special seasons in the church's year, beginning at Advent through to Christmas, Epiphany, and later Lent, Easter, and Pentecost. By placing Trinity Sunday today at the end of that cycle, we are marking that the Trinity is the working out of who and what God is to us in the light of what's gone before, particularly in the light of the birth, life, death and resurrection of Jesus. The Trinity is the way in which the early church worked out how to name the greatness and the wonder of God in community. Three persons in relationship with each other. It might not be a simple answer, but at least it's a starting point to explain the breadth, height, depth and closeness of God in Christian experience. The Trinity is a basis of exploration in how we can understand God. The Trinity is a treasured breakthrough in the early church's understanding of God. The Trinity roots us in the, in the riches of their reflections. People who've been there before us and asked the same questions as us have already begun to work out how to explain our experience of God. We in the modern world aren't the first people to ask searching questions or to seek meaning in experience. The early church was there before us. Those early Christians also worked out that to affirm the Trinity is not primarily to believe in something daft, which is hard to get your head around, 
but is a willingness to be embraced within the height, depth, breadth and closeness of God. Without wanting to impose it back into scripture, we can find the raw material for the Trinity in the Bible. The most explicit mention of the three persons of the Trinity is in our reading from Matthew's Gospel. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's a well-known verse, except it's never translated correctly, not even in the most accurate translations. In the original Greek, it doesn't actually say go, it really says going, or as you are going, or why you are going, while you are going. It's not a, an instruction, it's a participle, a doing word. We participate in the work of God. This has a profound shift in its meaning for us. To say while you are going or as you are going gives a much better sense that mission is about what we do in our lives day by day. We share and live our faith as Christian people from Monday to Saturday as well as Sunday. As we are going, we live the gospel in our homes, workplaces, schools, these days socially distanced, of course. And on Zoom, in Facebook, we live the gospel and so share in God's mission. Neither does this verse really translate as baptising in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit but rather as baptising into the name of God. God's name is not a good luck charm. We are baptised into a relationship. We enter into a community, into God's covenant people. To be a Christian and be baptised into God's covenant through Christ is to continually grow into relationship with God. If today I was asked the question by those 100 ministers, what do you mean by God? I would reply, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Though of course, they might still ask, well, what do you mean by that? To which I'd respond, at the heart of the Trinity is God in relationship, God in community, in which day by day we are embraced within the height, breadth, depth and closeness of God. Thanks be to God. God, our Father, you are the creator of all things. The heavens tell of your glory, the earth reveals your handiwork. Praise be to you. In the midst of all your beauty, forgive us 
for all that makes for ugliness in our world. Hatred, dishonesty, prejudice, injustice, war. May our ugliness give way to beauty, our wars to peace, our hunger to sufficiency, and our carelessness to responsibility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you shed your glory and took upon yourself our human weakness. You were born amongst us, and when we ask to see your face, you point us to those who are in need. You call us to be open to you in the whole of life and to recognise your presence in every person. And yet, we find you to be a challenge. You exclude no one, and yet we are choosy. Teach us to recognise the cries of those who are too weak to help themselves. And to be more sensitive to the needs of those who lay at our door. May we always stand for the rights of the poor and not for the privileges of the few. For kindness and integrity and not greed and cynical living for authority rooted in love and not power vested in rank or possession. And may the light of your presence shine into the lives of all who need your company. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit of God, at the beginning you hovered over the face of the waters, and still you breathe life into all things. By you we are born as children of the Father, and you pray within us with prayers too deep for words. Come now and breathe over our troubled world. Breathe on the waste places of our world where people starve. Breathe on the violent places where innocent people suffer and die. Breathe on your church that she may be strong in faith and courageous in witness. And breathe on us, so that we might serve you with courage. Come and speak peace where nations meet. Speak justice where ideas clash. Bring healing where bodies hurt. Bring love where the world seeks your unity. And may the light of your presence shine upon all of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Maker's blessing be ours. On the road, on our journey, guiding us and cherishing us. The Son's blessing be ours. Wine and water, bread and stories, feeding us and challenging us. The Spirit's blessing be ours, wind and fire, joy and wisdom, comforting us and disturbing us. God's blessing be ours, and all peoples, today and forevermore. Amen. Oh, Lord.